record. Here we go. So hi, everybody. Welcome to this webinar. We're going to be talking about time-restricted eating, also known as intermittent fasting. Um, the reason why I chose to use this, uh, not, uh, this name or this terminology, it's because in scientific literature, this is the way they are going to refer to this as. So they're not going to use the term intermittent fasting as much as they use time-restricting eating or time-restricting feeding, okay? So um, before we dive in, uh, we must, um, something I want to clarify, okay? I've learned through lots of reading and lots of student studying that there are three ways you can regain control over your nutrition. There are three parameters or three variables you could play with so that you um, have control over your nutrition. The first one is what we eat. What we eat is pretty simple. So um, maybe you have salads or you eat pizza or you eat smoothies or you are gonna refrain from having uh, animal protein or you're not gonna have dairy or you know, you're gonna restrict or limit um, something that you presently eat. So that's one uh, parameter we could play with. The second lever we could pull is when we eat. And this simply means when in the day are we going to be ingesting our food? Okay, that's very simple. The third lever we can pull is how much we eat. So this is what it's called um, calorie restriction. So instead of having all of that, you're going to have small meals and you're going to be counting your calories so that you are always in a caloric deficit so that you can uh, have control over your nutrition and your weight. What we're going to do today here is look at lever number two, when we eat, because that is exactly time-restricted eating. So as of now, when you see T-R-E, it's time-restricted eating. And before I go further, just please know that all I'm, I'm going to say here is advice. I'm not a medical doctor. If, you, if there is any conditions, health conditions, um, you have to go see the, your, your doctor first and then maybe follow my advice, okay? I have my certification in nutrition. I've read a lot. However, I'm not a, a physician. All right, so what is TRE? It is very simple. It is in eating only during a certain number of hours each day. So there are several ways of doing this, okay? And these are just a few. So there's one that's called circadian rhythm TRE, which it's a 12 hour feeding window followed by a 12 hour fasting window. There is 16, eight time restricted eating, which means you're gonna be restricting your eating window to eight hours and you're gonna be fasting for 16 hours. 18-6, which means eating uh, in a time period of six hours and then fasting for 18 hours. And there is this one that's super cool. It sounds super cool. It's like, oh mad. Like when you say it, it's like, oh mad. Means one meal a day. And there are more. There is people that, that will do longer fast, 48 hour, 24 hour fast. There's people that do three weeks. I'm not going to get there because those are actually you should do them under medical supervision. This right here, we could do by ourselves, okay? Um, and throughout this presentation, always remember, you are gonna, our, our bodies are all, always under two states. So either you are in a fasted state or either you are in a feed, fed state, okay? So either you are eating or either you're not. So if you two, if we, if we take one of these, examples let's say we take 16 8 this means for instance that you're going to be eating from 11 a.m to 7 p.m what does that mean let's say you wake up at 7 30 and then um you know that you you dress up you have coffee black coffee because black coffee won't break your fast or you have tea or you just have water um and then you start working or maybe you walk the dog you, you spend time with your children, and then by 11 a.m. you have your first bite. Doesn't mean you're going to be eating constantly for all these hours. It means 
you could eat anything you would like to eat in this eating window. So you start at 11 a.m. and your last bite, it's gonna be at 7 p.m. And that's it. Very simple for now, okay? Beautiful. So the idea is to focus on when we eat and not what we're eating or how much we're eating. That's super, it's, it's the main purpose of doing time-restricted eating. It's that the idea is to pull that lever uh, that refers to when we're eating and not what we're eating or how much we're eating. Now let's look back before diving further and I want you to actually use your imagination or maybe your knowledge, because maybe you, you know about the subject and think about our ancestors, okay? Think about hunter gatherers. And there is people still in this century, in this time that live like this. They don't have access to power. They live in huts. Um, and I want you to imagine how did they live um, and when, what, and how much did they eat? Like how, like just use your imagination for a little bit there, okay? I'm pretty sure you figured out they would go hunt and they would, you know, collect or har harvest fruits and grains and, you know, um, vegetables. Uh, but something is certain. They had not food, they didn't have food available 24 seven like we do. Okay, I, I just want you to Get, wrap your head around that. We are super comfortable. We are super lucky, quote unquote, because I don't know if it's actually that good, but if I'm here working and I'm hungry or I feel like I'm hungry, then I could just stand up, go to my kitchen and I have tons of choices. And even if there is nothing in my kitchen, I could go to the closest uh, convenience store or to the drugstore or to the supermarket and food is available for me, anything I want whenever I want, because there are even, I don't know now with the lockdown, right? But generally in, at least here in Montreal, there are places that are open 24 seven, or you could get delivery. You could, oh, it's 3 a.m. and I'm, I'm, I, I want a pizza. Okay, let's have some pizza. So think now about your ancestors. I don't think they had that option, okay? So they would spend many hours without ingesting any food. Why? because they would go hunt. Um, I don't know how much that took. I don't know if it's one day or two days. Um, and then they would have whatever they had hunt. And then again, so they would eat what was available, what was there. They would eat it and then they'll stop eating until they have something available for eat, to eat again, okay? Also something that I don't know if you have thought about, they didn't have electricity. So for them to wake up at 11 or wait till 11, 10 p.m. to have dinner, it's actually hard because it's dark. And even if they have fire, imagine doing all that work to light up the fire just to have a midnight snack. So what they would do is, well, they would use natural light and they would eat as they have made because it's more comfortable, right? Um, so think about this. And well, of course, the quality of your food, but we're not getting into the subject of what they ate or what we are eating, but just, I, I thought it was valid to mention that the quality of their food was like incredibly mil, mil, <laughs> thousand times better. But actually think about that. Think about how they would be eating day after day. So if we follow our ancestors um, way of living, and if we think that maybe our bodies are built to live in that way as they did before, then we should probably eat according to our body clock because we have an internal body clock and it all depends on the light, okay? If, we, if you were in my, in my challenge, my last challenge, we talked about this really quick last week, but this is gonna be just a review. What do I mean by body clock? It means there is something here in our brain that gets activated with sunlight. Sunlight enters through our eyes. This body clock I'm talking about 
gets activated and then it gives a signal to the rest of the body like it's time to be, get go get active work study walk um, jump do all the things you do during the day then as the Sun comes down then our body clock is gonna signal us to go to bed we're gonna get sleepy melatonin is gonna go up so we're gonna go to bed and then next day we start over so this means we should at least try to eat um, when the Sun is out the thing is I know we're living in the northern uh, hemisphere and during the winter days are shorter but just let's imagine we are in like spring okay so we have 12, 12 hours of sunlight now if we do that then you will be fasting for around 12 hours and it's gonna be completely natural just imagine this again you wake up at 7 the time you brush your teeth take your shower get ready walk the dog um, I don't know get your kids ready say hi to your husband and nah, 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 nah. it's 8 that's when you have your first bite and then at night you have dinner by 7 30 you are done by 8 and then you go to bed and repeat so you're doing a 12-hour fast so it's it's if you think about it that way it's, it's actually super simple and if we come back what we were discussing at the beginning we were we would be doing a circadian rhythm time restrict, restricted eating see how easy that is great now why um, why is good to fast what what's the point so for the first three hours let's say you just finished eating uh, any food um, the first thing that happens is your food is gonna get broken into glucose amino acids or fatty acids depending on what you ate if you eat carbs then carbs or sugar get broken into um, glucose protein it's gonna get broken into amino acids and then fats are broken into fatty acids there, there is also leptin and ghrelin once again if you were there last week you know what I'm talking about but it's super simple leptin and ghrelin are two hormones that signal the brain if you're hungry or not so when we eat um, leptin uh, increases leptin is gonna signal the brain that we're full and then grilling goes down grilling is the one that says we're hungry okay so this is exactly what happens you eat your food and then leptin is like yo we're good no more food we're we're full then after that your um, your blood level increase of glucose yeah so in your blood there is gonna be more glucose more amino acids and more fatty acids okay then your, your pancreas is gonna release insulin and the the point of insulin being released is to take some glucose from the blood um, and have it uh, bring nutrients into the cells okay these uh, if you take glucose it's going to be stored as glycogen or fat or muscle or it's going to be used as energy okay and this is really like super basic because it's not for me to go and give you a really super deep understanding of digestion and hormones and all but I do want you to get the idea now what happens if you fast a little longer then your blood glucose continues to drop because remember insulin is taking the glucose from the blood so it's dropping and then insulin release it's gonna lower too and then glucagon it's gonna start to rise and glucagon it's another another hormone that it's produced by the pancreas and its function is to regulate um, uh, sorry blood sugar okay so glucagon is gonna tell the liver to release stored glucose because remember glucose is low so we want to have the balance so gluca glucagon sorry glucagon <laughs> It's gonna turn the liver, okay, release glucose because we're going low. Then a liver glycogen begins to break down and release glucose for energy. And then when you are depleted from glucose, you're gonna start burning fat. You're gonna start um, using your fat stores to uh, have energy, okay? 
So toward the end of that phase, when you're approaching your 20 hours, approximately, um, you will start depleting your glycogen stores, which means you need access to another food source, which is gonna be fat. So glucose is still gonna be your primary preferred source of fuel, but eventually you're gonna need to use your fat stores for energy. And just so you know, between 12 or 14 or 20, sorry, 12 to 24 hours of fast, your blood glucose levels will be reduced by about 20%, okay? When exactly this happens depends on you, depends on your body composition, depends on your last meal, depends on uh, whether you do exercise or not, but it, it's going to happen eventually. Now, what are the benefits of time-restricted eating? Sorry, my dog is asking for water. There we go. All right. All right. So there are many benefits, um, including you're going to feel a boost in your energy levels. Um, it's going to improve your circulating insulin and blood pressure. It improves body composition, which means your like lean mass versus um, adipose tissue. It reduces markers of inflammation. It, it promotes weight loss. It accelerates cellular repair, improves metabolic health. And all of these. So I can send you this by email if you want to have it. Um, but these, and I want you to know, these are not just random facts that I pulled out of Google. These are scientifically proven. And I'm actually, I follow a lot the work of, uh, there is a guy named Sachin Panda. He's a PhD. Um, he's a professor at the, the Salak Institute for Biological Studies in California. And he is really into time-restricted eating and circadian rhythms and circadian clocks and everything. So if you are, if you want to look further Google him, he's super good. Um, you could also go to foundmyfitness.com uh, with uh, Dr. Rhonda Patrick, who, by the way, has interviews with Dr. Panda. So all these have been scientifically proven. And I'm gonna talk specifically about one study Dr. Panda did that I found amazing. So he works a lot with mice in the lab. He took two groups of identical mice Okay, so the one group, they were being fed lots of fatty foods. So for humans, our equivalent would, equivalent would, would be to eat a lot of cheese, nachos, ice cream, etc. And then the second group, he did the same, same food. But these mice were only allowed to eat within a 10 to 12 hour window. So the first group, which we're going to call group A, they were having food at living, which means um, whenever they want it, go. Second group, which we're gonna call group B, they still have the same type of food, but only in this uh, eating window. So time was restricted, but the calorie intake was not. So coming back to, we're playing with when we eat, but not what we eat or how much. Okay, remember those three levers how I talked to you about at the beginning? Okay, so what happened? The mice in group B did not become obese, diabetic, and they had a normal liver function and they had normal cholesterol and everything. All the markers were good, despite of the fact that they were not having the healthiest of meals. The only thing they did was restrict their um, eating window to 10 to 12 hours, okay? And like this study I'm talking to you about right now, there are a lot out there. And if you want me to give you links to read, I'll be, it will be my pleasure to do so. I just didn't want to spend lots of time talking about every study out there, but I do have the links, I do have books, I do have, if you wanna read, I do have information for you. So this, it's something he said in his book. I'm reading his book right now. It's called The Circadian Code. Super good. Um, 
So he says, we sometimes don't have much control over what and how much food we eat. But there is something we can control, and that's our time. Which means maybe you are, you know, running around like crazy, you have no time, you have to order takeout because you didn't have time to cook, you didn't have time to go to the grocery stores, or, well, right now, it's it, with the pandemic, there's not, res restaurants are not open, but let's say you had a business meeting and you were eating out, or you had a, a you know, lunch uh, event at your work, so you had no control over the food that was being served, but you have control over your time. So you could perfectly manage when during the day you are going to eat and when during the day you are going to fast. So ideally, and we're going to coming back to this uh, uh, slide, um, ideally, at least, you should eat according to your body clock, which means try to eat, you know, you get up, wait for an hour, you know, the time you brush your teeth, have your shower, get ready, then have your first bite, and then at night, 12 hours later, have your last bite. And that's it. You will be doing time-restricted eating, and you will be um, eating for a 12-hour period. Okay. Now, this, I, I, I don't want to get too technical, but I do want you to understand something. Every cell, every organ in our body has a clock. Okay. And you have to think about your body as a system, as a, let's say, an orchestra. Okay, so you know when you when you see an orchestra, there is people playing the violin, there is people playing the cello, there is people play, playing the trumpet, there is people playing percussion, and they're all being directed by one guy. So the group that plays the violin needs to be tight, and they need to play to a T. And so do the so does the group that's playing um, the the trumpets and the flute and all that. So is the group that's doing the percussion. And not only do they have to work perfectly as separate entities, they need to also work together as a team so that it whatever they're playing sounds good. It's the same with our body. So every organ has a clock, and we need to help our body or every organ or every system that we have within our body, we have to help them work well so that together they uh, make us have a healthy life, okay? So our master clock, it's going to reset all the other body clocks. And I have some examples here for you. There is the pituitary gland, which is going to release growth hormone. There is the adrenal glands, which are in charge of stress hormones. There is the thyroid, which will release thyroid hormones, the gonads, reproductive hormones, um, and the pineal gland, which is going to release melatonin, which is the sleep hormone. Okay, then the master clock and the other body clocks are related. So all of the the ones I showed you before, these clocks, sorry, um, there, they are located in the hypothalamus in the brain. But there are also clocks in our gut and our liver, okay? So the master clock and this, uh, the combination of these clocks we have down here and the master clock, it's um, going to dictate the timing of the food we eat, okay? So we should at least align our fasted and feeding windows with our master clock, which again, it's going to coincide or it's going to be uh, similar to the sunrise, sunrise and the sunset. Very simple. Very, very simple. Now, my challenge for you is to chart your progress if you're interested in trying time-restricted eating. So this tracker I could send you by email if you want, if you're up for the challenge. Um, and I would love for you to... Um, for three weeks, just write down what time of the day did you have your first bite, what time of the day you have your last, and how many hours you slept, and then you track if you find, if you see any changes, if you feel your, you know, your energy is better, your mood, or maybe your bowel movement, anything you notice, you write it down as well. Um, 
some questions I get asked a lot. Coffee, tea, what is it that we can have when we are in the fasted state? So if you're gonna have coffee, make it black, no sugar, no milk, and try to have your last cup of coffee before noon, like noon max. It's gonna help you have a good night's sleep. If you drink tea, same thing, no sugar, um, and try not to have too much green tea in the afternoon because there's also a little bit of caffeine there. So you could have coffee, black tea, and water, lots of water. That for me, those are the drinks you can have without breaking your fast, okay? Now, if you're up, I have another challenge for you. So this is me. Um, and I'm not gonna say I was overweight whatsoever. And it's for me, it wasn't about weight loss. I was just experimenting on myself because I was super curious uh, as to figure out if I was able, I did it as a challenge because I, I thought I was, for me, it was impossible to fast. I'm like, no, that's never gonna work for me. Um, but what happened is on January, well, actually on, yeah, January 1st, um, I got injured and I got a knee injury and it, my knee actually did, it sounded crack. So I'm like, oh, oh, that's not good. That is so not good. What am I gonna do? So when I started teaching this year, I was doing everything and I'm still am doing everything low impact. So for me, it was a perfect opportunity to try this time-restricted eating thing because I was, I was not going to be um, as active, though I still am, but I'm not running because I can't. I'm not jumping because I can't. So I'm like, okay, let's see if I can do this now because before it was a little bit too hard. I was, I was um, my calorie, uh, how do you say it? I was burning too many calories for me to try to like, eat in a, in a window there but I tried it and well I don't know if you can tell in the picture I have lost like four kilos or I don't weigh myself much but I think it's three four kilos which translates to like eight pounds but it's the energy level guys and I eat less but it's not I don't mean to eat less it's just that your stomach like I don't know how to explain it but you you don't get as hungry you're not eating constantly, um, you feel amazing, you have, you feel focused, you have more energy, and yes, well, you lose a little bit of centimeters here and there. I have another picture, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, here I can tell, I can see it. So this, and these pictures in the black outfit I took this afternoon, so that's me currently. Um, and I started, as it says here, I started doing this on January 4th. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to go for 16 hours of uh, fasting. And if I can, let's say during the weekends, because I'm not doing much, I could go to 18. But that's the me. And that's not what I'm asking you to do, unless if you want to join my challenge, this is what we would do. I would ask you to fast for 12 hours three times a week, and then try to go for 16 hours two times a week, and then on weekends you do whatever you want, okay? Of course, every time you do a challenge with me, we're gonna be uh, also talking about water intake, nutrition, and healthy sleep hygiene. And I know we said, okay, it's about when you eat, not what you eat, but still I'm not gonna, um, sell you the idea that okay we're gonna fast for 12 hours and we are gonna have frappuccinos pretzels pizza poutine and a hot dog every day because we know how important it is to have a balanced nutrition which means you know have your salad have meat if you eat meat have uh, i don't know beans have bread eat healthy yeah what else you get my guidance, you get workouts and access to my online classes, support, motivation, education, health benefits, recipes. If you need a meal plan, I could provide you with a meal plan. So my, my, my goal for you is to try to do this fasting thing to see if it works for you and to be healthy 
and see all the health benefits you're going to get by the end of the third week. Um, the idea is to start on February 15th, so you don't have to tell me right now if you're joining or not, but you should tell me soon. And the price, well, if you are already part of my online classes, it's included if you are registered for the full session. And if not, it's only $100, okay? Now, we are gonna talk about this in a little while. I just wanna end the presentation saying what I always say, every action you take, it's a vote for the type of person you wish to become. So my goal in life is to help you live healthier, longer lives. And I believe in the power of habits to get you there. So we're going to try to just leave those old habits, bad habits behind. And we're going to walk towards new, healthier habits. Because eventually, that's what you become. You become your habits. So I'm going to stop the recording. And... Doo -doo -doo.